G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to talk about polyol esters. These are a class of base oils which are very oxidatively stable and you see them used a lot in things like jet oils. We want to understand though how are they different from let's say diesters which are typically used in things like compressor oils and why we get more oxidation stability out of a polyol ester. So let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about polyol esters. Now, if you'll remember, you know, we've got two different main classes of lubricants. We've got minerals and we have synthetics. Now, traditionally, minerals are group one, two, and three, whereas synthetics are group four and five. But we've also had this paradigm that we have talked about a few times where we think of uh, the group one through four as being on this triangle where we have aromatic, naphthenic, and paraffinic molecules. And the exercise of refining, going from group one to group two to group three, is an exercise in getting more paraffinic. And of course, PAO represents the very top of that chain. Now, this isn't really applicable to esters because they don't sit on this, um, this triangle, if you like. Uh, and we talked about this previously when we talked about uh, diesters. Now, if you'll remember back to that video, an ester is formed by the reaction of an acid with an alcohol. So acid plus alcohol gives us ester plus water. And this is a reaction you probably learned about in high school. Obviously, when we go to sell a finished lubricant, we need to remove the water. So we need to dehydrate it before we go to sell it. Because waters, as we explained in the hydrolytic stability video, reverse this reaction. And water plus ester gives you alcohol and acid. So in the basic sense, you have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, and you react the two of them, and that gives you an ester and a water. And of course, that R functional group can be any kind of polymer. We have an R functional group on both sides of the ester. So remember, um, ester is just a functional group. That's all it is. But it represents an infinite array of different kinds of molecules. Now, when it comes to a polyol ester, how do we make that? Well, we take a monoacid, so that, that is a, an acid with a single acid functional group, and we react it with what we call a multi-alcohol. So it's a, it's a molecule that has multiple alcohol functional groups. So that's the OH functional group. And out of that, you get a polyol ester and a water. So what does that look like in practice? Well, in the traditional model, we have carboxylic acids and alcohols. So we're going to take Two, remember we called them mono acids, right? So they just have a single acid functional group. And we're going to react that with an alcohol. In this case, we're showing a uh, we're showing two alcohol functional groups, so one on either side. You see that OH functional group. And this particular molecule is called neopentyl glycol. Now there are a few different types of polyol esters. In this instance, we're reacting it with a very specific type of alcohol called neopentyl glycol, but there are other versions. You may have heard of TMP esters, for example, which are made of trimeliate uh, alcohols, um, and there's a few other variations on it. The reason this is called neopentyl glycol is because it's based on the molecule neopentane, right? So if you see in the middle, there's those five carbons with hydrogens adjoining to them. So that's neopentane. And of course, then we have the OH functional groups bolted onto either end. This is generally what I believe the jet oils are, are based on. So now if we react the acid with the alcohols, we get a polyol ester plus two waters. Now, one thing that you'll notice immediately that is very different between a uh, polyol ester and let's say, for example, the diesters that we have talked about in a previous video is that here, the alcohol is in the middle and the acids reacted on the sides. That was the opposite of a diester, which was made up of a diacid, which sat in the middle, and alcohols that reacted to it on the sides, right? And that gives it specific properties. So first of all, we have two ester functional groups and they are inward facing. It's important to remember the fact that they're inward facing. But ester functional groups are quite oxidatively stable because in some senses they are pre-oxidized. They already have oxygen in them. So if another oxygen molecule comes along to quote unquote attack it, there's already oxygen there. There's no, there's no spaces to occupy. 
So that makes the ester functional group quite oxidatively stable. Then of course we have the R functional groups. Now these can be made of really any kind of polymer that we want. Typically they'll be straight chain alkanes, but we could have branched alkanes, for example. And these give us our VI properties, right? So if I want more VI, I just make a, a much larger molecule. In the center, what we have is three carbons. And because of the, the way that the carbon bonds are structured, it means that the outside is quite flexible around this. So the molecule can actually kind of bend around the center and that makes the molecule quite flexible. One thing that you'll also notice, and this is really important to the oxidative stability, is that there are no what we call beta hydrogens. So now I need to explain what a beta hydrogen is. If you look at the single bond oxygen, right, which is the, the inboard oxygen, if you like, on both of the ester functional groups, a beta carbon is the second carbon in from that. A beta hydrogen is a hydrogen that is attached to the beta carbon. And for reasons that we're not going to go into in this particular video, beta hydrogens are susceptible to oxidative attack. In, as you can see in this particular mo molecule, the basic carbon from both sides is attached to only carbons, right? So there are four carbons that surround it. That makes a polyol ester much more oxidatively stable than a diester, and therefore it can perform at higher temperatures. One of the other things that you'll notice, and this is common across all of the esters, is that it also has polarity to it. So especially with the carbon to oxygen bond, we know that oxygen is very electronegative and it likes to hold on to those electrons and that makes that double bond oxygen quite electronegative. So what does that mean? Well, as it approaches metal surfaces, those oxygens are likely to want to bond with the metal surfaces. Not bond in a chemical sense, but they're attracted electrically to it. Um, that means that polyol esters tend to form quite good uh, lubricant films, right? Um, because they tend to adhere to metal surfaces really well. Now, as we pointed out in a previous video, that does mean that in some cases they can outcompete things like EP or anti-wear additives. But in general, we like this performance because of the film strength that it gives us. All right, so that was a really quick video on polyol esters and what makes them different from your standard diesters. Again, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.